Hey guys, it's Johnny Raw again, and today I wanted to make a little tutorial or tip for you today. And it's gonna be my 10 or 11 tips for beginner photographers. And these are just gonna be in no specific order, but I think these are, it's kind of an order, but it's not really the best order. And they may not be the best uh, tips, but they, I think they're pretty good in my opinion. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go on with them. So first of all, I guess um, most of you had something like this, uh, just a normal point and shoot camera. And now that you're gonna go into photography, I think you're gonna buy a uh, better camera, a DSLR. And well, you can basically take mostly the same pictures if you're not gonna go into manual that much. And my first tip is gonna go um, in how to take the pictures. You're gonna have to make an interesting uh, angle of the picture. So normally you would just go out, mm, I think just in Paris, uh, Eiffel Tower. Oh, looks good. I'm just gonna take it. And now, uh, now that you want to create more stunning or more creative focus, you should go into more um, different angles of the subject. So that's gonna be one thing I would say is pretty good that gives the viewer a pretty good uh, look on the picture. So that's my first tip. My second tip is, and that's why I have all this stuff over here, is, um, and I think it's the biggest one if you want to buy many things, um, many, if you need flash and all that kind of stuff, to, so this is the tip for you, um, don't buy the most expensive things. I always go uh, with, I guess, the cheapest one that I can get, and they work perfectly fine. So um, this is a flash, and I think the original Canon one cost 350 to 400 euros, so well, that's way too much for me, and it's just a light. So I bought this young new. It's a Chinese, Japanese uh, company or whatever, and it costs about fifty dollars. So that's perfect. Then these uh, wireless triggers, also from young new, pretty cheap, and they do the job. Mostly, it's just the man that you have uh, the manual settings and not the flash doesn't know what aperture you're using and all that kind of stuff. So you have to set the things, but it's great for learning because you go into manual. So I think just spending less money on that is pretty good on the equipment. Then the lenses, before you buy something like this, a pretty good macro lens or a really good uh, telephoto lens, just go into the cheapest ones. And this is the, something I saw on every photographer. Um, it, the Canon 50mm f1.8 and it costs 90 to 100 euros. And that's pretty cheap for a fixed lens. So it's made of plastic, so that's basically, I guess, why the price is so cheap. But um, try out cheaper lenses because you're not gonna go and print them in the biggest sizes that you can get in the beginning. So just try out cheaper lenses, just how they work. Then, of course, uh, in, in terms of batteries, sorry. Um, the original ones, I think they cost 40 to 50 euros and well, I got this one, one from Pat, uh, Patona, 10 euros. So um, the capacity is lower, so this one has, I think, 1080 milliamp, and this one has 950, so it's a tiny difference. But um, I've got now, sorry, one original and um, three uh, cheaper ones, and they work perfectly. They have never died on me yet. and. If you need some batteries and you're on the go, I would always recommend using some well, fake ones. And well, if you really need to recommend on your, if you really really have to rely on your batteries, you should maybe go uh, with the original one so you don't have any problems and you can say, oh, I should have bought that. So that's something like that. And even this battery grip, the original one, $180, this one was uh, $60. And I'm gonna post the uh, links on Amazon, from Amazon on in the description. My third and uh, also very important tip is gonna be how to uh, use your camera. You should learn your camera and what it can do. Um, basically, the big tip is always get out of automatic auto, auto auto sorry and go into manual or just aperture priority or shutter priority. Go into manual where you have to learn your camera what can it do and how high you can you can you set the ISO. Uh, what other modes do you have and all that kind of stuff. So how your camera works is pretty awesome because uh, you, every camera works differently and it gives different pictures. So you just learn your camera and try to go out there in the world and just do that. And I think that's one of the other tips. Just go out uh, and try out everything. Maybe you're just gonna go out for two hours and get well, one shot that is gonna be good. But you're gonna learn from that. You're gonna say, oh, the shutter speed wasn't that good or maybe my angles were too narrow or always the pictures are blurry and not on focus. So you're gonna have to learn and just by doing it, 
then my next tip is going to be the composing and how you're going to compose things. So maybe normally if you go into on holidays with your little point and shoot camera, you're just going to have the main object in the middle and well, everything around us is going to be there. So maybe you're not going to try to have your subject on the right side or something. So you can activate this grid, which is I think nine spaces, I think. So you can put them in the middle on the right side or something. Um, just more interesting so that you can get a blurry focus, blurry background maybe and just try to get a new composing instead of just this uh, in the middle so that it gets new shots. Then um, you shouldn't buy everything that you want uh, just because you, if you have the money okay just do it but um, I would always recommend uh, buying cheaper things and don't buy everything so what camera do you need? Do you need a uh, Canon uh, 5D? I don't think so. Normally not. So um, what do you need? I needed this camera because it had a flip screen for videos which is pretty awesome and it had the touch screen. So that was the cheapest uh, Canon option that I got for this uh, thing that I wanted and with this lens which is uh, pretty silent so it's perfect for videos. Uh, just if you don't need this uh, lens and the touch screen just go with the 600D I think or 650D you're gonna have to uh, save a lot of money and just Look at all the cameras and think of what you need. What lenses do you need? Do you need a macro lens? Do you need a fixed focus lens? Which I'm gonna recommend, I guess. And, well, that's just a big tip. Just buy the things you need. And yeah, as I said, the next tip is gonna be, um, I would recommend buying a fixed focus lens. Lens. And, well, my big uh, recommendation would be the 50mm 1.8 from Canon. I think it's, there's one from Nikon as well. I don't know the price yet. But this is uh, one hundred dollars, ninety euros, uh, something like that. Um, and this is pretty awesome because fixed focus is uh, normally with your point and shoot cameras you could zoom in like twenty times, forty times optical zoom. And with these, um, a really good um, zooming lens would be pretty expensive. So you would always, but okay, you can buy it, and then you would always be like zooming into your object and not moving at all. But now with these. You have a fixed focus, so you have you need to move to your subject, and then uh, you have to. I would always, um, if you're doing something still, you should do the manual focus and learn and uh, to set the focus right. So you're gonna have to move around the subject and trying to get it into the composing you want, and not just zoom in and out like a really lazy person. So that's I would for learning. I would recommend a fixed focus link. Then also my next tip is going to be for focus and um, how you're going to focus and what kind of focus you want. Do you want a single shot focus or whatever and then also what aperture um, you're going to need to have like the whole subject in focus because at f1.8 you're not going to have all, everything in focus. For a portrait you're going to have like uh, from the nose to not even the eye in focus so you have to know what aperture you're going to need to have everything in focus. So. That's basically again something you're just gonna have to go out and try it out and learn what aperture you're gonna use and what you're gonna need. Yeah, my almost last tip is gonna be um, edit the photos at and again at try to save some money with the software. There are free uh, things for the PC or Mac that you can use to edit photos. Really simple. Don't what I don't like and uh, just add some uh, many filters like Instagram or something so I don't really like that but um, try to edit the exposure, the contrast and all the, the saturation and all the kind of things later because most, most of the time you're not gonna have the perfect picture in the camera. Some people say uh, you have to get the perfect photo in the camera because you can set the saturation and all the kind of stuff in camera but um, really, do you want to spend like five minutes in this small screen typing in what saturation you want and then taking the photo? Or do you want to take a normal photo and then just in raw format, raw, and then edit it later on the PC which has a way bigger screen which is easier to edit. Uh, so I guess editing them in the PC is way better and easier. And well, if you take them in raw you can really edit them all you want and not lose that much quality. And well, that's basically it and now my last tip is just go out there and try it. It sure takes its time, but it's got right and so have I.